Our next project, uh, if you go online, go to Google, type in WPAP, which stands for Wajita Pop Art Portraits, you'll see this style, which is very geometric and straight lined in nature and also uh, very, very colorful. You'll also see the same and similar style uh, where we have low poly art, where it's broken up into these, again, very, very geometric shapes <clears throat> and then colored. So you'll see something like this. This is sort of what the project is, taking something from an original uh, photograph and then breaking it down into geometric shapes and then coloring those shapes. Uh, how you color them is up to you. So here we go, we're gonna get going. We're gonna open up Adobe Illustrator. Once you open up Adobe Illustrator, please go to Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials, make sure everybody's working in the same playing field. Then we're gonna go to File and New. Once we go to File and New, we're gonna go to the Print setting up top. Make sure we go to uh, Tabloid Size. Then we're gonna click Create. Now, we're going to find an image on the internet of a person's face. It could be up to their shoulders or up to their waist. This is the image that I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> in my folder, you're going to drag it into your own personal folder. But right now, I'm going to leave it on the desktop. We're going to go to File, Place. Then from there, we're going to go to the desktop. We're going to find that piece that, I'm, that I want to put in there, which is uh, not that one. Where is it? right there and I'm gonna hit place once I hit place I'm gonna click and drag put it out on my screen there it looks pretty good I'm gonna take the black arrow right click on it make sure you see your layers panel that's this one right here click and open that one up so you can see both at the same time you can always open them like this too as well so you can see your layers here's my layers panel we're gonna double click right here on the layers panel and call this one pick with it selected we're gonna bring down the opacity at the top of our screen right up here we're gonna bring it down to about a 65, 70 or so. We're going to lock that down. After we do that, we're going to hit the um, create new layer button. We're going to double click that one and now we're going to call that one lines. And this is where you're going to create all of your lines. For our lines, what we're going to do is we're going to use these two sets of tools. This one and also the pen tool. So here are your two options. I'm going to use the line tool first. I'm going to go up to the top and make sure that my fill color is nothing and that my stroke here is black. The size of the stroke is up to you. One point should be fine. Then you're going to go over to your image. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Command plus plus plus. You can see this looks a little pixelated so if your image is uh, clearer that's better so get a bigger image from the internet when you first pick. We're going to start with just a few crisscrossing lines. So I'm going to click and pull and drag across. Then I'm going to click and pull drag another one. How far you go with each one is up to you. You can go different increments and kind of break it up like that. You can even do one like this. So I kind of start almost with like a random um, grouping, I guess you could call it, of intersecting lines. Then I'm going to take the black arrow or you can hit command on your keyboard and click away so nothing is selected. Now at that point what you're going to do is you're going to start creating shapes. You can use the same tool, that line tool, and do this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. You can start just to kind of click and drag to create lines and then hold command and click away. You can continue to do that in any area. Now what you're following though are the lines that you see like here's the eyebrow so I would follow that kind of like this. Hold command click away. Hold command click away. And if it's a dark area of the face I'm still doing dragging click hold drag hit command click away. All right. If it's a dark area, we're going to fill this dark area with multiple shapes. The darker it is, the more shapes it should have. If it's a big area of light color or bright color, it can have less shapes. I'll show you what I mean back in uh, Google for a second. If we go to those WPAP portraits, you see that there are large areas of white here. Those are like the shiny, bright areas. Those can have larger shapes, but inside the darker areas, you're going to have more uh, more shapes, smaller shapes and, and more of them. But here you can have larger chunks. So you continue to kind of draw these lines. Your second option is to use the pen tool here and draw those lines as well. So I could like do this for example. I could go over to this one and just go like this. Click, let go, click, let go, click, let go, click, let go. And you can draw it like this. Click, let go, click, let go. Click, let go, click, let go, click, let go. And then go back to where you started. So you can use that too. You can even just do one line like this and then hold command, click away, and then do another line. So sometimes the shapes are going to be random, 
You're not going to click and pull. You're just going to click, click, and then hold Command and click away. These can be kind of random where you place them. That's up to you. But again, if it's a dark area, it'll have more shapes. If it's a light area, like you see the shine right underneath the eyebrow here, this could be one big area. You see that? That could be left as one big area because it's a light area. But any dark area is going to have multiple shapes. We'll take a look at some examples from some students just so you can get an idea of what's going on here. So here's Jaden's, the beginning of hers. Show you a couple of other ones here. Um, Starnia, I believe. So students are doing this all in all in different ways. You see what she's doing here? She has a lot of different shapes, a lot of these kind of zigzaggy shapes. That's totally fine. In some of her brighter areas, she can do larger shapes. You see when Jaden's here, what she does, if I take off the eyeball for the original pick layer, it's starting to look like them, and she has a nice balance, right, of small shapes inside the dark areas and then these large shapes inside the bright areas, right? And you can kind of randomly do it, but you're also following the lines that you see. So I'm going to close those out. Okay, so you're going to continue to do this until you've filled up with as many lines as you possibly can. Um, <clears throat> when you are done with this, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to use one of the other students' examples to uh, color in because this one's not really fully done here. So I'm going to close. I'm going to close this one. Out. Make sure you save your work. Okay, make sure you save. Then inside the folder, I'm going to go to someone's uh, project here. I'll use uh, I'll use Cristania's just to show you. So once you have all your pieces like this, the first step is to make sure that all of your lines are connected. So when I say connected, what I mean is here, you see how this line here doesn't fully connect? You can take the white arrow on your toolbar direct selection tool, go right up to the point, click on it, pull and drag to kind of connect these points. See that? As long as everything's kind of connected, you're not going to have any problems. If you find that there's some gaps, make sure you kind of pull and drag to connect. See what I'm doing? Pull and drag to connect, or this one, pull and drag to connect. Okay, make sure all your lines are connected. Now, if they're all connected, here are the steps to start to color. All right, I know that she is not done with this yet, but I'm just gonna show you how to color using what she has, all right? So I'm gonna hide the pick layer, stay on my lines layer, do command all to select all of the lines. All right, or you could do Command A on your keyboard to do the same thing. Once they're all selected, you're gonna to go to Object, Live Paint, and Make. Okay, once you've done that, you can hold the Command key and click away so nothing is selected. Then you're gonna use the Live Paint bucket, which is this one here, or you can hit K on your keyboard to get to it. After you've done that, you can see there's three little boxes above this pen tool, and if I hit the left and right arrow on my keyboard, the colors change. But you could also, and what's more, um, sort of more of a, a professional option here, is to go to swatches that come up. They were, they were over here, by the way, like over here, I think. You can just pull the swatches out, and you'll see a list of colors. Right now, there's only about 40, 50 colors in here, but you can go up to the top corner, click, choose Open Libraries, and there's tons of different color panels and palettes to use. So, for example, I typically use color books. Pantone um, coated, solid coated, I like. And when you click it, you're going to get a whole other grouping window uh, or palette, whatever you want to call it, that opens up and you have now you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors, okay? So you can use these. So what you do is you click on a color and you go right over to this and you see that as I just kind of brush over it, they highlight. All I got to do is click. So I click a color and then I click it. And I click a color and then I click it, All right? Um, so as you click, you kind of pick the colors you want, you fill it in, you pick the colors you want, you fill it in, you pick the colors you want, you fill it in. All right. Um, what colors are you going to use? Well, you're going to use colors that are bright in the bright areas of the face. So if I look at the original here, you know, this area of his head is really kind of bright. So I'm going to use the light or bright colors in that area. They don't all have to be the exact. You want, to, you want to make them a little different so that you can see the difference between them. Um, but in a dark area like the uh, eyebrow here, I would definitely go darker with my colors. Even if it's the same color range, just kind of use, you know, darker colors to begin to fill it in. You get the idea? So you continue to fill it in as best you can. You fill in all these little areas, all those shapes that you've created, you're now filling in. And then, all right, um, 
I'm just going to fill the rest of them in kind of randomly here, just so you can see some differences. I'm not going to fill in all of these because the, the video would be too long, obviously. But we're going to try to fill in as many as we can just to show you the last and final step of the project. Okay, so I've got enough pieces there just to sort of show you um, what happens. Okay, now we're going to use the selection tool again to select everything. That's Command A or Select All. Then we're going to go to Object, Live Paint, and Expand. Okay, then I'm going to take the um, this Group Selection tool. I'm going to click away so nothing is selected. And then I'm going to select one of these black lines, just like that. And you see here I selected one of these black lines, and it tells me that it has no fill and a black stroke. What I want to do is go to Select, Same, Stroke Color, and it selects all of the black lines that you see. And then we're going to hit Delete on the keyboard. We get rid of the black lines, and look what you're left with. You're left with all of your shapes perfectly done and all colored with no black lines in between and it gives you a real beautiful kind of a, a look the only other option for you is when you do click on these if you want to use a gradient so if I go to my swatches and I click open libraries and go to gradients you'll see all different types of gradients so for example if I go to color combinations I see all of these different ones right and when I click on one you see what it's doing if you want to control the way it looks this button over here on the side on your toolbar called the gradient tool this one as soon as I click it because I had this one selected it puts a little bar across it and with this bar you can click and drag and the direction of it will change if you move the dot it will change you can rotate it over here and change the rotation you can even go on it and move the individual colors around so if you want to use gradients instead of solid colors you can do that as well once you're complete make sure you go to your layers turn off your pick layer and you'll be left with just your image full of the colors um, of the shapes that you've created. Make sure after that point you do a file and save and come see me when you are complete.